Loops. Okay. What are loops? When we want uh, a specific code to be executed many times, okay? So instead of copying the code over and over and over again as many times as you want, we can use a loop, okay? Um, a loop that would execute the code as many times as we want. When we don't know how many times our code will be executed, for example, we want to let the user decide how many times a certain action will happen, okay? This is just a situation. So we're going to learn today two types of loops, while loop and for loop. So let's look at the syntax. While, and in parentheses, some kind of expression, do a code. What, what do I mean to put an expression inside of parentheses here? What I'm saying is, when to the compiler, calculate the expression inside. If the outcome is true, that means it's happening, it exists, go inside the curly bracket and do the code that I'm writing. You stop doing the loop once inside of the while is false, okay? So expression, when the outcome of the expression is true, the program will execute the code inside of the loop. And our code is the code we want to execute every time the loop repeats. What is a for loop? So a for loop has a different syntax. The syntax of the for loop, so we say that we write the word for, and also the word while is also a C++ uh, word, okay? So it's like a syntax. We, it's like a command. So for here, we write the word for, that's the command, and inside of parentheses, we, we need to put three parts. We need to, we gotta have a variable that it's gonna manage that loop. It's going to tell the loop how many times to go and when to stop. And I'm going to show that in a minute. We're going to do an, uh, together an example. But just like as a ex ex uh, general explanation, we need to init that variable to something. We need to put some kind of a condition. The condition is just like inside of the while loop. It would be if the condition is true, go inside. If it's not true, finish that loop. And we need to change it. The, this variable in a way that it will influence the condition. So I wrote increment here, but it doesn't necessarily have to be increment. It could be decrement as well. It's some kind of a change of that variable that will influence the condition. Let's see an example. Okay, so I have an example here and I'm going to do it with you. So first I'm going to go over it and then we're going to do it step by step. So Let's print odd numbers. So given an integer submitted by the user, okay, uh, print all odd numbers from one to that in input integer. So let's go over. So this is our main, our entry point for our program. So we're going to declare a number and i. i is another variable that I'm going to use inside my loop. Okay. So first I'm asking the user, I'm using a CLF command. I'm using please enter a number. The user writes a number and I read it with my CIN command. And then I'm going to start the loop. So let's see those three parts that I just talked about. So I, we're going to use I variable as the variable that's going to manage our loop and tell the loop how much to go, how much to continue, and when to stop. So we need to initialize the I somehow. The compiler needs to know what's the content, where are we starting. Okay, so we say we start from 1, give it the 1. As long as i is always smaller than the number that the user entered, go inside and do c out and write uh, the number. Well, I guess I want to write the i, not the number, so that's a mistake. Uh, I want to write the number. And then I'm going to increment the i by 2. Okay, so let me just change this. I'm going to, that's going to be probably i. Right, and we're going to write out the i. Okay, so let's see what's happening when we do that. Let's do it together. Okay. Okay. So let's. I'm just going to write what the code is giving us, and we're going to do it together. So we have number. which equal 
well, let's just give it any number, okay? Let's give it the number of five, okay? And we have i. And we started, we're starting the i to be one, right? Now let's follow the loop. For i equal one, is it equal one? Yes. As long as i is smaller or equal to the number, is i smaller or equal to 5? Yes, it's true. So we go inside and what do we do? We print out i. That's right here. We print out i and then we go to the increment part and we change it to i plus 2. You see uh, what I use here? I use it plus equal. That's another syntax. If I do i plus equal to, basically it's going to increment i by 2 and put the value inside of i. Okay? So we're going to increment by 2. It's going to be 3 now. Okay? Now we're going to check the condition again. Is i smaller or equal to 5? Is it true? Yeah. i is 3 and 5 is 5. is bigger. Go out and see out the i. So now i is going to be 3. And then we're going to increment i by 2. So now it's going to be 5. And now we're going to check the condition again. Is i equal smaller or equal to 5? Is it true? Equal it's equal to. So it's still fit our condition, right? So we're going to go in and we're going to print out 5. Now we're going to increment i again by 2. It's going to be now 7, right? Now we're going to ask again, is i smaller or equal to 5? Is it? No. So we're ending the loop. Is this what we wanted? Yes. So this is how the for loop works. Let's do another project then. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to give you a starting point, and then you're going to get a, take a few minutes to try on your own. So in this project, our program will ask the user for a number. You can also initial, initialize yourself a number. If you want to do more, be, be more interactive, ask the user to get it, to print it. OK. So we'll ask the user for a number. And the, pro the problem will read the number and then print, starting from the given number, in decreasing order, all the numbers until one. And in the last, we'll, and, and after that, we're going to print out less stuff. So let's, let's write together just what do we need here, OK? I'm just going to start. So. Okay, let's see what do we need. Um, okay, maybe I should move it a little bit so you can see. Okay. Uh, so we're going to need a number. So we're going to need an int number. What else do we need? The problem will read the number and then print, starting from the given number in decreasing order, all the numbers, and in the end, blast off. So we need a loop, right? We need a loop. That Where, where is it going to start? What should be, let's, let's, let's do int i, we're going to use the i, right? And let's do a for loop. And let's talk about this for loop. How should we initialize the i? Should it start from 1? No, it should start from 5. Very good. From i equal 5 and semicolon. Semicolon means we are moving on to the condition. What's the condition? Where, where do, when do we want to start? It's to 1. Exactly. So i e bigger or equal to 1, another semicolon. What should we, how should we change the i so the loop would move on? Minus. Minus? Subtract. Yeah. Subtract. So, so it would be what? It would be i minus 1? Yes, or in shorten, minus minus. Oh. OK? And then don't, no, don't forget the curly brackets. And inside, now this I leave to you. What do we want to? In every time the loop one, what do we, what do you want to do? In its sake. 
We need it to look like this. Yes, yeah. We need it to look like this. Yeah. And in the end, what are we gonna do? Right? See out? Blast off. Blast off. Okay, so let's take a few minutes. Let's do it. Okay, so let's open up three. Okay, I'm just going to walk you through what I did. So I'm writing everything inside the main. This is our entry point. Let's see. I declare two integers, a number and an index. The index is basically my i. That's going to be my iterator for the loop, okay? Okay, first I'm asking the user to... Uh, enter a positive number and I'm reading it so with the C in now I'm going to do my for loop I'm going to start from the number and I'm going to go until one basically because the condition is only when index is bigger than zero and I'm going to decrease it in one every time so here I'm, I'm printing out the index and it's going to start from whatever the number is so if it's five it's going to start from five and you see that thing that's basically break line that's that's a way for me to tell the compiler go down a line and as you can see I putting another errors here that's concatenating whatever I'm printing out so I'm printing out the, the value of my index and then I'm gonna go down the line this is how I get the five three two the five four three two one one after the other okay and in the end I'm gonna just gonna write the blast off I'm not doing it inside of the loop because I know I'm gonna do it after the loop is done Why do you have the C out with the space? The C out with the quotes underneath blast off? It's a C out. Oh, it's just uh, another. It, it's not really necessary. It's just to, to make it nicer with oh. this thing. That's all. Oh, okay. um, it's not necessary. It's space yeah, yeah it's, it's not necessarily okay. for the program right now. Okay, okay uh, if we're good with this, can we continue?